County, and we wanted to welcome you to this beautiful and unpredictable exhibit. So, without further ado, the Halliston Mark Ed. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank everyone just for coming. It means a lot to me. Can we turn the music off? Of course. And um, it really means a lot to me that you would take out time of your day to come here and uh, see the new show. I was very excited um, when I heard about uh, doing the show. Uh, uh, Angela Godin, she uh, contacted me and the last time I could remember was years ago. And as many of you may or may not know, I, I, I don't like to show the same thing over again. And I always um, would like to come up with something new. And uh, so I really had to stretch this time because the one Although these paintings are new, the, the dimensional paintings were uh, really a, um, a stretch for me, uh, that, of, or thank you, of getting the, um, getting the uh, feeling that I wanted in it. And I wanted to talk to you about the dimension, or uh, the construction, what they were done. First of all, I couldn't have done it without my brother Norman. Uh, that really helped me so much in it. He has um, a large uh, wood shop with uh, bandsaws and jigsaws and all kinds of tools that I don't have. But I, I spoke to him about the initial idea of um, like saying doing shapes that were irregular, not like a, a rectangle or a square, but doing shapes that were irregular and then having it that it could um, rest against the wall that I wanted them to come out to, to make dimension. So this was all achieved using three quarter inch plywood. And some of the pieces you see, like the ribbing that go up, it kind of curves. And that's because he used a special technique called coping, and he would run the wood over through to make all these little slats that you could bend it. And and then, of course, you know, the, the nail gun uh, and glue came in. So these forms or these models were made very strong. And uh, there's not that much weight to it, but um, the, um, the ribs, I call them ribs, but they came up no more than four inches, um, all of them. That was the, you know, kind of the thing because I didn't want it to be, you know, top heavy or, you know, something like that. Now, the canvas, the white, uh, or the raw canvas comes in a big roll, like bigger than carpet. And I rolled that out on the floor and then I put these forms on top of the canvas and I gave it at least um, four inches more around the perimeter. So when you're stretching it, you're, you're not short, and you have enough to staple on the back side. And so I do that. And sometimes um, the canvas um, looks like it's kind of soft and pillowy, and that was because I would stuff material into it and then after that, I gessoed all of this raw canvas. Gesso is a white, um, uh, really thick paint. Um, and it's, it's um, if it, you, you, you can even cover up the grain of the canvas by using a lot of gesso, or not. And like, um, on that uh, bass guitar, the sleeves on that, uh, on that body, they're white and tan. Well, the white is only gesso, and then the tan is just the raw canvas. And the gloves are leather, and uh, the hair is hemp cord, or that hemp uh, thing. And, um, and 
and the shoes are from Italy, thanks to my wife Cindy. <laughs> 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 That's a problem. Oh, but um, I uh, and the cool thing is on these frames now <clears throat> that we had to take a drill and a uh, couple holes so you could get the jigsaw in there to cut out the middle of it. But the cool thing is, is that it could just go flat on the wall and uh, very nice. But I'll, I'll show you um, an example. Like say, the backs of these were all um, done with, with finished with um, a nice um, material, and it's all the same material that I had, but it gives a nice uh, complete uh, finished look. Now this, of course, this ruffle had to be sewn on to the canvas before it was stretched uh, to the the wood, and. Um, it's, you know, they're like objects of art. And when I first started it, I wanted the name of the show to be The Beautiful Object. I, I wanted it to be The Beautiful Object. But then, they were, they were beautiful to me, but they were taking on characters. And they were not so beautiful as interesting and unpredictable. <clears throat> and that's where the name for it, because I did not have any idea, or well, I had a, a big idea, but I, I did not know what it would look like. And that, is, that was the pure joy of painting, of seeing that change, right before your eyes, and it looks like, to me, it looks like it is fun, and it looks happy. And it's, it's bright, and uh, it's, um, it's eye-catching. Now, um, the other, some other pieces I'll go through quickly. The first one, uh, Lady with the Ermine, was done on a, other canvas that I saved some of the gold leaf and I uh, patterned, uh, there's a wonderful artist, you might know Leonardo da Vinci, that did <laughs> that lady with the ermine. Well that was, uh, that was patterned after that. <clears throat> um, the second one was a uh, Venetian cat. Cindy and I had the uh, wonderful experience of being in Venice and uh, it's it's just a very romantic place, but uh, the cat uh, keeps coming up in the paintings. I, we have two cats, and uh, they're, they're, they're really uh, good companions. Then the models come, and um, we went through all of those. There's another cat. That was done on a reclaimed um, painting that was just uh, an ocean scene, <clears throat> and then I, thought it would be more interesting to have a cat there. So, put that there. The, the bass just transpired. It was one of my instruments that the neck uh, broke off. I love instruments. Instruments are like, that's what we make music with. And it's just so. Uh, and I think a lot of times when I watch musicians uh, play, I do not play the bass. But when they play guitar, it's, it's almost like they're making love to the instrument. And I think, I think of that way, of that, um, of that kind of shape, too, on that. And the next one, the tree people, that was actually a uh, reclaimed painting that was, um, if you can kind of imagine turning it upside down, it would just be trees, uh, a couple trees, or more than a couple trees. And, but that happened there. Uh, the jester and the elephant, um, that um, I did, and um, my brother Norman, who I really uh, loved so much uh, because of him helping me to show, I, he is 
obsessed with plum bombs and um, <laughs> things like of that nature. And, uh, and uh, I thought I'd throw that in there. Um, the one on the corner, Ben, is a, a friend of mine. He modeled for that. He had a good uh, tone structure. In that. And the, um, also, you know, it, he does remind me of the look. Um, well, I have sons that they're young, and it's they have a good look to them, you know. And it's, but it was particularly fun because in Ben had like oh, I say you know, a half an hour, and I just sketched sketched it. But sketching and drawing from life is just so important sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's not, but in this case it was. And uh, here, uh, the cockatiel and that uh, person on the chair, just a kind of a thoughtful painting. You can take that wherever. And this one here, that's uh, Cindy playing the baritone <laughs> <laughs> food song. And here, this one. Uh, uh, the cat playing the um, violin with the, his whiskers. And um, I could not, um, like that plumb bob, it's, I, I love it like when people say, I can't draw a straight line, I can't either. <laughs> Unless we could do it if we have a ruler, but no one could draw a straight line. And how do you do that? Well, I just used the, um, the uh, string and I sewed it into the canvas, or not. You may or may not have noticed that. And there, um, it's sewn uh, and, you know, uh, knotted and then uh, glued down it. And I did the same thing here with the, um, the cats that are fishing. These lines, those are um, just sewn in the back. And, uh, this one here, Jacob and Esau. Jacob was a guy that um, sewed the coat of many colors for Joseph, uh, one of his sons. And Esau was uh, the twin brother that kind of sold his birthright for a cup of soup. But that I thought that that was um, a good painting there. This one, the man and the woman. Um, and yellow. Yeah. Reflection, person looking in the mirror. So, they're very colorful. And then the um, Jesus, the big Jesus out in the um, corridor um, that was. Um, uh, now, I did that painting on the floor. And I have to tell you guys, most of the time I do work on the floor on my hands and knees. It's just easier on my back, I guess, at this age. And I feel more comfortable. And with these new, uh, or those newer paintings, you know, you, they don't have to be hung exactly like that. They could be any way that would fit your room or, you know, your life. So you might, and that was a very interesting thing because when I was working on them all on the floor, all at the same time, I was working on these 20-some um, paintings. And... You look at them from different angles, and they're very different. And you know, some things you don't like, and then that's what you change. And other things, just keep it how it is. And you know, now as far as the ceramics go, um, this is like a, a, like a salad bowl that you could put, um, you know, celery or carrots or onions or whatever. But I like it how you know, to look at it this way because you can see the face. Yeah. <laughs> and this one, boss, that's pretty heavy. Um, I, I have a kiln that they were fired in. And you know, so, so many times things will blow up, you know, that, you know, and it's not so lucky, but that, uh, that's there, that made it. And then the, the other pieces like shoes and little things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's more of a classical. And I used the book, it was uh, Bruno Lucchesi, an Italian master. And my Aunt Naomi gave me this book. It was called Modeling the Head in Clay. And it just step by step. I'm talking about, you know, like an armature, like a like a wire and newspaper and you know, and then the slabs of clay. I just did it earnestly, step by step. It might be nice, but he would laugh <laughs> if he would see it. Because his work was so much more beautiful and classical. <laughs> but I it worked out just fine, you know, for the the, the what it was, you know. And it was more of a classical um, method of sculpting. Yeah. It's all beautiful, Mark. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, and now, okay, that's good. That was only 20 minutes. And now it's time for any questions. I'll gladly take. Um, and also, uh, feel, again, thank you so much for coming. And feel free to. Um, Kate um, got extra sandwiches because they're uh, of the crowd, and so please um, nourish yourselves and um, and look at. I like it with the lights turned up like this. It's uh, uh, you can yeah. the paintings aren't even brighter. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, this is a lovely gallery in this space. I'm so. Blessed and so happy, you know, that we have this uh, here in this community. So. Yes. The object on, on that wall is reminding of fish. Is that okay. No, it wasn't. It was, but I agree with you. And uh, some say it like a sea turtle, and uh, they see other things. Uh, it is nautical, I would say, uh, like a, a, a shell. I, you know. They're all very organic. Yes, yes. Organic. Yeah, what would that mean? Organic means like it's not so, there's no, it, there are straight edges, but yet organic is like something that is, um, it's like it comes from, from, from the earth. Yeah. Comes from nature. It comes from nature. Yeah. Now look, these, um, Pieces. One of them is very. Those of you that sew could see uh, the fourth one across, very much like a um, a this one a shirt or a jacket, like the neck, shoulder, sleeve. That you know, it has that kind of um, that feeling of it. And I remember. So much, it's very important to uh, um, my mom, who is now 102. You know, when I was a kid, along with uh, nine or eight, and, and there were um, always scraps of material around. And one of my jobs, I remember, was to fold up the patterns that she would use. You know, she always read the directions first, read the directions. Well, here, there was no directions. I had to make it up. You know, as I went along, but I did it. I did it respectfully and peacefully, like that. There was no. There was no like trauma. There was not any kind of um, hardship. Or, it, it was fun. It was fun, and you make it fun by you know you uh, you're remembering different things. Well, no, it's not so fun when the bobbin. Red runs out. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not so fun when you want to go faster and your machine is speaking to me. <laughs> That's not so fun. <laughs> but you have to. I remember my mom saying a lot: "Take your time. Take your time on something." And you know, and just the the thoughtfulness. Okay, just on those backings, I could have very easily. Um, Put the material the wrong side up, and and then cut it, and then discover, oh, you know, I made a mistake, or you know, something like that. But and people say, how long does it take to to make? Well, 
when you're driving, when you're um, shopping, when you're doing something else, you're thinking about this project and how, how you're going to get it done. And those are hours that add up. You know, it's when you're sleeping. You know, and but it kind of makes it fun for you know what are you you know to have the opportunity. I'm so blessed to go into a studio. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy, and be able to paint. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. Are there any questions? I really enjoyed talking to you. It's almost two thirty, and you know, I. Could I say? Right now, I don't know why, but I'm just thinking about the people in Ukraine. And I just can't help it. But um, I think that we should just pray for them and keep them in our hearts. And, you know, we have this wonderful opportunity here, but it's not so good for them. And they're, you know, our brothers and sisters. So I do feel bad about that. Um, How do you decide what colors? Um, that's a nice question. I have all the colors, and one color makes another one better. It complements it, and that's all the nature of my game. I love colors. The more, the better. And so I will not um, exclude any. And sometimes it's very hard, you know, say, to oh, me. But I'm blessed with having them, so why not? You know, I have a lot of colors. And I use DeMar varnish and sand oil. Now, sand oil is a real thick, and DeMar varnish is real thin and has a pungent uh, citrus smell. And I mix those together. And little at a time. And that's my medium that I, you know, paint. The DeMar varnish will get, make it shinier uh, and also make it dry. And I had to really consider that drying time because I knew that this show was going to open this very day. And I wanted these paintings to be dry. So they had to be painted weeks before. And, um, was it? Thank you so much. Yes. Everyone, uh, this is wonderful and I'm a really talented artist. Yeah. Uh, want to talk about what you're doing here in April? Oh, I am so excited. <laughs> I am so excited. Thank you. In April, on my twin brother's birthday, it's uh, the 22nd, and he'll be 65. Uh, but uh, I am so blessed to have the opportunity to do a, a concert, a dinner concert here. And it's, um, I'll be doing two sets, uh, and probably each one will be at least 40 minutes long. A lot of songs, beautiful songs, one right after the other. And you guys might start dancing, <laughs> but uh, uh, it should be a really good time. And it's a Friday, uh, and um, I know that the um, Johnson Symphony is doing a really big thing the next day on a Saturday, the 23rd. But my um, gig here is on the 22nd. So excited to do that. And um, I'm also. Um, happy to be in a play, Very Good Man, Charlie Brown. Uh, I didn't, have not um, got the script yet, but that's coming up, and I played the part of Linus, the guy that holds a blanket. <laughs> so that should, be, that, that should be fun. You know. In this case, you said you're also doing a class. What do you mean a class? I am honored to work with the visually impaired and the blind on a, a class, I'll be bringing um, musical instruments, and um, there's a piano upstairs. We might have it down. But there'll definitely be lots of music and your and, unpredictable uh, workshop, Mark. 
It is a because you're doing the blind and the visually handicapped, but you're also doing something for the general public too. Oh, thank so you. Talk about that one too. Thank you. I'm not. Can, can, can you help me with that? I, you I'm called it sure. unpredictable, and I don't think you even know what you're teaching yet. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it won't be it's something not too messy. I mean, I can I'll tell you that, you know, it won't be wood or things. I think Mark's plan was to have just art supplies put out, and you would figure out along with him whatever he's going to be teaching you. Yeah, creativity is, you know, now, um, like a really fast way to, um, you know, get models and stuff is with paper mache or um, the plaster craft or you know, you're thinking about the drawing, but, um, you know, working like with, like on those models, they do take a long time, and that's, I mean, that's kind of why they're priced, what, what they are, because a lot of work has gone into it, but, um, the, um, the process, the creative process of seeing paints mix and seeing forms come together is something magical. Almost like when you, um, you know, origami, uh, a flat piece of paper turns into a bird or a fish or a frog or something. It's something magical. And it, it not, I think it um, empowers people that it's good for you because it not only is good for your brain, but it's something that is tangible and personal that you can hold and you can touch. And I think um, many times our world is so electronic and the screen and you don't get a chance to really smell the elements or the uh, feel of the um, what you're working with, whether it be sand or clay or uh, whatever. So I think that's important and uh, that's why I don't really like to limit uh, when you're talking about mixed media, you know, there's so many ways, but then you have to think about it, some are quite dangerous, fiberglass, for instance, you know, um, you you're have to, but yet, if it's, if it's in a right kind of setting, outdoors or something, it's really cool, you know, because of the strength. But um, I, I, again, we learn, I think we learn from history of the work that we've done and the work that we see other artists do. And there are so many um, artists, the more I live, the more ignorant I be become, I feel, because there's these artists that I don't even know, and they're so good. And, you know. Thank you again.